Future Speak, July 11th, 2018. So last Thursday, when the tariffs actually came true, the stock market shook it off. All markets did actually, as traders were pretty set up for it. And there was actually a short squeeze. We saw soybeans explode to the upside when we heard that China was not going to buy them anymore. Uh, and that should have actually broken the market. So when they didn't come in, in in the bean market, well, they scrambled to buy them. That changed significantly. While that was a one-day short squeeze, we actually had the stock market going up for three days uh, as it was apparent that the trade war wasn't going to be that big of a deal and that uh, $34 billion in uh, product that was going to be tariffed well, maybe it would be 50 with another 16 coming. China would answer that. We'd get by it. Earnings are supposed to be good. Uh, and the stock market got very solid. Then when the president came out and said $200 billion more uh, in tariffs that are coming, uh, that shook up the markets and they fell overnight uh, here on Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Uh, so that short squeeze in stocks, well, it ended. We don't know for sure if that's going to come back. We don't know for sure what the answer is going to be from China. We're all going to be watching from that. In the meantime, we've had some pretty big moves in the markets here. Well, that would be maybe in all but the Treasury market, whose movement has been pretty feeble. We're going to look, as we always do, at uh, several different um, uh, sectors here. Uh, we have six of them, energy, foreign exchange, metals, treasury, stock indexes, and the grains and softs. So we're going to start out in the energies as we always do. Interesting news today uh, that came out for the energy market. Uh, they, they, they started out on the weak side with the markets, and then news came out that crude stocks had fallen very sharply. In fact, uh, the biggest since 2016, and th that gave a small bounce. But then when the news came out that Saudis, they had opened their spigots and output had gone up pretty significantly as they wanted to answer the reduction to oil output in some other countries with disruptions and with the Iran situation and uh, oil fell very sharply and we expected it that it was going to peak around 75 and pull back and it's pulled back uh, sharply from there. Uh, same thing for the products which got up into resistance areas and are pulling back also and we have natural gas which still hasn't put in that intermediate bottom. Uh, that we expected would be coming soon. So we're going to start out in this sector in light crude, uh, and then you will get a sense for how we do this. Uh, this is our side-by-side -side chart, weekly on the left, daily on the right. I know we have new people here that are watching this. And uh, we uh, look at, we have this expanded out to a 10-year weekly here and a two-year daily. And then we bring it in because uh, that helps us get all the proper cycle alignments. On the bottom are cycle brackets. These are not cycles. These are simply guides to help us discover the cycles and the cycles uh, configure differently than uh, what we have, as you can see here on the bottom, as I blow up the weekly cycle. So these would be the ideal cycles on the bottom, and you can see there's a, a minor cycle right in here and an intermediate cycle and a major cycle right there. So those are how we, um, we use those guides to help us, and sometimes the patterns are just perfectly in lockstep, and sometimes they get out of sync and even shift around. So we end up uh, responding to that and reworking charts, and that's what we do all of the time. Look at uh, these charts and uh, give us what we believe is the highest probability of patterns so that we can have the greatest understanding of the market. Here you can see it gets up here to the 78.6% FIB and then rejects. Oil down $1.75 today, falling now about $2.60 off of that peak that it made right over there. And uh, that, uh, you know, got through this cycle peak right over here. That's not an unusual condition for that to happen. The reason is because, well, you can see this is a bullish cycle, strongly upward configured. This is a bullish cycle, strongly upward configured. That says you're likely to get above this high, which it did, and then above this high, which it did. 
now can it follow through what are the longer term patterns we're looking for and that is we get some guides right over here if there's some turmoil and uh, for some reason there's a short squeeze in oil it could get well above that 75 level it's a low probability uh, it's more likely it's going to follow these patterns right in here with some normal trading and that would be maybe coming back up over here and then pulling back then rallying again and then coming down again because this dominant downward force has us believing that there's going to be some sharp decline into mid-September. So we think that this rally in here will not last anywhere near as long as these big green zones that you see there and that it will have peaked much sooner than those did. Here's the daily chart in there. It's got some beautiful symmetry that you can see uh, as we have this rally right in here and this decline. You can see that and then this rally right in here and then this decline. We thought it would come down this week into these support zones and that's what it is doing. It has another two to four days where we think it's going to play around in here, try to get one more rally and then roll over. So we can see here some support right around 70.65, the resistance up around $75. And for the moment, we're going to call that the range. And we think that the odds are higher that it's going to break the downside of the range ultimately than it will on the upside. When we look at these products in here, forward slash RB gasoline, we'll get a sense for a weaker pattern, we, these weaker patterns that we're looking at in here. So uh, here is the RB weekly. We've had a little bit of a problem with uh, the drawing sets coming up slowly. So you could see that there's a drawing set on the right and there's one on the left that took a little time to pop in there. So I'm, I might have to wait a little bit on some of these. So here, here you could see this uh, where oil went up and took out the high. Remember we showed you the rally and then the rally and then the pullback and then the new high. Well, you can see what the products are doing, and that's because worldwide demand for the products is lower. So uh, we're looking for the uh, this to give us a sense for this failure area that we think is going to happen sooner rather than later in light crude as these things remain weaker. So uh, uh, there's the failure we're looking for. It still has time to still play around in here, as you can see, similar patterns right in here. So that would be this right in here, pulling down right here, one more rally, and then pulling down. That's exactly what we said in light crude, right? But this one is a lot weaker. <coughs> as you can see. Here's the daily pattern as it fails in the resistance zone. Um, you'll note this gray area there. <coughs> That's an older cycle and it had a shift. So we put in the new cycle shift and you can see that actually ended up correct. We have a uh, evening star pattern that's forming right in there uh, that would be suggestive that it is failing in this resistance zone. We'd be looking for about four days of decline from there, another rally, and then another decline after that based on these patterns as they're suggestive. They're dotted because it illustrates the shifted cycle that we saw in there, and we put that in for our members so that they can understand those changes in the markets. Forward slash HO is the next one we're going to look at. We'll blow this one up, and you could see the same failure. Look at that. That's actually a gravestone doji right now, but there's still two more days to go uh, as it fails in that resistance zone and then rolls over. Pretty much the same story as I just uh, told you in gasoline. And here is the uh, same thing. Look at the, the failure right in there. Um, this was an abandoned baby right there uh, as there was a downside gap. Uh, and uh, that actually is not one anymore. So I'm just going to remove that out of there because it's it did not leave the uh, gap as I thought it was there. Are. So uh, it's a um, just a, uh, an engulfing pattern reversal or uh, an evening star that's forming in there, and we think that is the peak. So uh, those of you that received my charts today with the abandoned baby there, you can remove it because it just is not correct. So uh, that's heating oil failing from the same spot that we saw in gasoline and showing you the weakness in the products. Natural gas is the next one we're going to look at. 
blow this up. We have been looking for a bottom to form in here. When it was way up over here, we said, you know, we thought it was going to correct to the downside. Uh, and uh, it had slightly shifted out here to the right. It's still not bottoming. You can see that. So it might even take a little further shift to the right for us to establish where that where the cyclical um, nesting is right there. You can see here, when I look here, this really points to another week and a half or two weeks before this bottom is in place. So when I look over here back to the weekly, that really looks to me like another couple of weeks there is reasonable. And when I look here, another couple of weeks is reasonable. So <clears throat> we're going to look for uh, that bottoming uh, process in natural gas that we saw right there to take a little bit more time. Uh, and that is a look at the energies overall. You can see that we believe, based on the sum of the evidence, that outside of any geopolitical issues, there is plenty of oil out there. There's plenty of ability for these producers to um, pick up production and believe me Saudi Arabia needs the money to do that they're uh, they're likely not to let this oil price run away on the upside especially in a time of the trade war because you know that just puts a bigger tax on people Well, the trade war is taxing everybody so uh, I would say that their response would be to produce more oil and I can't see any big up movement here in the oil market while those conditions exist. So now we're going to switch over and look at foreign exchange. We'll start out in the dollar. We believe that the dollar was in a corrective process in what has turned out to be a pretty bullish overall uh, pattern that we're looking at. So let's uh, let's just consider these bigger patterns right in here. And I'm, I'm going to re refer back to what we just talked about in the oil market. If you remember, I showed you there was minor and intermediate and major cycles. So when, when we're in a period of uh, the major cycle pushing down, what happens is, is that you get a failure pretty early in the advance and then it falls for a long period of time. So this is very similar to what I see in the oil market right now and why I believe that oil has a lot of risk into September. It's a very similar setup in there. But we're looking at the dollar which made that important low uh, right there as your nested area on that 23 bar low. So this peak right over here was 19 right there. You can see it 19 out of 22 to 24. So that puts us now at in week 22. So that says to us that we're likely to be bottoming in this cycle pattern. So if we're likely to be bottoming right in here, you could see it's at the 23%, which is extraordinarily strong, not hardly able to get down to that 13-week moving average, not anywhere near these support zones here. That makes the configuration of this incredibly strong and it says that the next rally is likely to take out those highs and we're looking for a strong period in the dollar coming up if i fine tune it by looking at the daily chart right here this looks like <clears throat> it's got another you know, few days in here to decline you see the way we have it drawn is if it's going to fall somewhat sharply in the next few days it doesn't have to. It could be just a mild downtick in here. Uh, and that low right over there, it would be very early. And if that was the low, it would be very bullish uh, if that happened. So um, a, a bottom getting ready to form and likely a big upward move here in the dollar. Now I want you to remember that when we look at the metals markets, when we come up to that. So if we're looking for a bottom soon in the dollar, we would be looking for a peak soon in the euro currency. So we try to use both of these to get a better understanding of the market. So here is your uh, green zone for the euro currency. What does this tell you when you look at this green zone? Well, first of all, you could see this big sharp decline in this red zone right over here. <clears throat> After that, we would expect to get, you know, a rally of some consequence. But here you could see it's an extremely feeble rally. And with the dollar about to bottom, then this looks like this is going to turn over actually in maybe some sharp way. So we have to see how it begins to act. But 
we, we would expect this to roll over pretty soon. When I switch over to the daily chart, you can see in here that this looks like it's ready to move to the downside here also as we have it projected. So the, this is kind of a week or week and a half out, then we would expect some rally, and then we would expect a big sharp decline. So this period right over here would be where the, uh, the highest probability short side entry is likely to be. So we're going to wait for that setup. We need an anchor point in here. We need to see the shape of the cycle pattern. And therefore, we're going to wait to see where that short side sale is going to set up. We're looking at that as inverse to the dollar. And uh, we will uh, continue to expect that the euro currency is going to be in some trouble. Forge slash 6B is the next one. A lot of news uh, in Great Britain uh, as the, um, the soft Brexit that uh, M Prime Minister May was working on uh, looks like it's being sharply challenged, and she's had some resignations there, and uh, it's even wondering where she's if she's going to be able to hold her office. So uh, the British pound's been in this red zone. Once it broke the important cycle low right over here, is where the red zone began, and being that there was all this time in the cycle you can see what it did, and that's why it's so important to understand the cycle phasing, uh, where you have a bottoming phase here, a rallying, rallying phase here, the sign that it was a peaking phase here, and a confirmed declining phase right here. Those are all very important in your analysis, and you know whether or not you want to bias your positions long or short. So when you have a condition in here where you have the whole moving average having turned over negative, the breakdown in the whole moving average remaining negative to this point, that's the point you want to be short. Now I want you to note the whole moving average trying to turn up here. I have a sense that here we are late where you have another two, three weeks potentially to go, that we have a bottoming process going on in the British pound. And with the, the hard Brexit being more likely in here or something speeding up the, the Brexit, that could set up a very good period for the British pound. And that would be coming in August, September, October. So we're looking for the bottoming process here in the British pound. Now, when I look at this, this looks like it goes out till August 17th. That's that cycle right over there. And you can see these projections way out over here. So if I go back over here, August 17th is, well, like right about over here. That would put it about four or five weeks away making the bottom. So that that's kind of how it lines up right now, uh, putting us in mid-August at the time period where we can get some upward velocity. Uh, that's uh, a, uh, a, I think, a good way that we can time this. So there's no rush to be buying the British pound right now, but we're starting to see some signs that we're going to be getting a bottoming in here in the British pound. That price-wise, the worst may have been seen at about 131. So that's forward slash 6B. U.S. dollar forward slash JPY is the next one we're going to look at. Now, there's some, the news that keeps coming out in here is about, is from Kuroda. Kuroda, the head of the central bank uh, in Japan, the BOJ, he simply is saying he's going to keep this easing policy on, like, forever. And with, with uh, the trade war going on and the dollar as a flight to safety instrument, you can see it's moving through this resistance zone. That's been our sell zone. It's brought lots of downside dips in here for the last six weeks. And now we're moving up through it. So our new area we're looking at here is 112.35, which is at 78.6%. So this is a, a little steeper advance that we see in here. Still, we see the, somewhere down the road in here in the next month or two months, this the dollar versus the Japanese yen changing very significantly 
where the yen gets much stronger. But right now it's not. You can see it's now wanting to move up to this area right over here. So that would be the intermediate 78.6%. There are plenty of other resistances up here, and I do not expect a runaway here in the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. 112.35 is reasonable. So here's this shorter term pattern right in here. It bottomed in a very unusual way as we had this lower low in here that was a false signal. So this is a very unusual shape, almost like a diamond shape uh, that is going on there, and it was a consolidation. And then the bottom came in at the right time. So you can see the timing in here of the lows. Here's the, the cycle low right do right over here. Here's the next one do right here. You can see that. This one came on time. This one in that diamond shape came on time. So we're in this rally right over here. And we'll, we, actually this got a lot stronger than, we, uh, than when we worked on these charts this morning. So we'll be putting in some new resistance zones in here uh, on an update. Again, 112.35 is the next spot that we're looking for there. Uh, so that is a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, which certainly has the U.S. dollar strengthening right in here. Next thing we'll look at is AUD U.S. dollar, which is the Aussie. And it got a little stronger in here. You could see it hit that resistance zone and then backed off really sharply. That's what we expected. We don't think it's going to be able to get through that resistance zone. And the trend for the Aussie versus the dollar remains to the downside. You can see it hits the sell zone right in there and wham, gets this big decline. This is called an inside down because you have the harami, that body inside the body there, and then moving down. So this looks like another week and a half to the downside here uh, in this uh, uh, declining phase. Now, this is a lot like we saw in the uh, Japanese yen, where it made a lower low here and then made a higher high here. So that is essentially a megaphone pattern being formed in there. This cycle could actually be shifting to here, so this rally and sell-off could be something more like this. We don't know that yet. We're just going to watch the shift and see if that happened, or if this is just you know forming a megaphone. That would mean that when this bottom is over, is done with, uh, in uh, the towards the end of July, <clears throat> then you're probably going to get another rally up into that sell zone area. Uh, if that is a megaphone that's forming. So you can get a good sense there about the timing and how clean that has been uh, up till now. Uh, and uh, you can see that while this, uh, I wanted to put this side by side up so you could see that while we've been in this declining period right over here, we've hit, in the, hit these sell zones one, two, and three, and it's backed off each time. That is from the swing high, swing low analysis, which of course you can watch in our uh, tools for text uh, uh, segment uh, category of videos. Tools for text, we've got 73 videos in there. Uh, so, man, you've got a great library of ways to learn uh, things about technical analysis. So uh, there is your uh, AUD. The next one we're going to look at is uh, US dollar uh, Canadian. And uh, put that up right here. We'll get the side by side up right here. Now, what does that look like to you when you look at it? Um, you can. The reason I put that up is because I want you to see the bullish base that was built right over here. When that happened uh, back at the end of 17 into 2018, it suggested a sharp rally was coming, and you could see that right here. So this is the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian. And the U.S. dollar got very strong versus the Canadian. This rally has lasted about 80% of the entire cyclical period. And then just a little bit of time for decline. And you can see it came here nicely. This has another week or two or none. Depends. You can see the bottom that's formed right in there. Uh, that could be the bottom. So either it has this period of time left, which would be a rally in here, a sell-off in here, test these lows, and then a big rally. 
or the bottom is in place and you're just going to get a rally. Any way you look at that, we think that price-wise, uh, we probably don't have a lot more time to go, don't have a lot more uh, to lose price-wise, and time in time period, you see that says 8.9. So this right over here, 8.9, would put this way out over here. That would be kind of an unusual spot for that cycle. As a matter of fact, this is probably drawn incorrectly. I'm just going to bring this into that low, and there you see how we adapt when we see things. And that actually looks to me like that low could very well be in place. So this next cycle that we're looking at over here on the daily is likely to get some upside legs, build some kind of a basin here, and then be explosive on the upside, U.S. dollar versus the Canadian. So all of that lines up with this stronger period for the dollar that we're talking about. And you can see that as you look at it strengthening against the Japanese yen uh, and the potential big break for the euro currency coming when we look at that. And then when you look at the Aussie and the Canadian, they're both very weak against the dollar. Uh, and that simply says to you that uh, this stronger dollar period ahead is likely to be coming. If that is the case, then it's pretty certain that metals are going to have a problem. And when you, we switch over to the metals right now, um, you're going to see that uh, the rallies are not able to hold up. They're simply uh, failing pretty quickly. And that the copper market, which we have cautioned about a lot and talked about the break to the downside, that is really giving uh, very negative messages for worldwide demand. Uh, and uh, that these trade wars are likely to be biting. Uh, and that would be a potential recession. Uh, the bond market doesn't get it yet. They're really not running right now, but we could be looking at really a worldwide, if it's not a recession, it's a slowdown uh, based on these tariffs. And I, I say to you, I say that to you because of the copper market. If, if I didn't see copper getting devastated, I, I might be saying, okay, we're gonna get by this. But when I see this copper pattern, I'm really worried. So, like we said, the dollar likely to strengthen. Now, it's a high probability based on the sum of the evidence that we have. So now we're going to switch over to gold. Now, we were looking for a gold bottom to occur and get a rally. Now, this is the silver pattern right over here. You could see that as we have the idealized cycle in silver right there. And silver bottomed right here. So did platinum. They got rallies and then broke. This, you could see, got a rally and then broke. So we keep, we keep looking at this shift and saying, well, are we going to get that bottom forming? And that's not happening. And you see this gold projection right over here. That's much less likely right now. In fact, another week or so, we're going to completely remove that from the pattern in here because dollar is not going to help this. And if that's the case, then this is the actual pattern right here, and that is pure ugliness. And we're looking at the potential for gold and silver and platinum to all be in trouble. When I look at the dominant pattern right over here, this is the Jan this is December 16th when that pattern ends. We could be in for a very bad period for these metals all the way out through the rest of the year. The, the, the pattern, the way this is shaping up, is bad. And when you think of the, of the dollar, it's, it's worse, right? So re remember these dotted lines right over there? That's this one right over here. That's really what we're looking at. So we're going to get a little different shape of that when we adjust this. And uh, this is uh, a, a really bad looking pattern when I look at that. So that's a look at gold on the weekly. When I switch it over to the daily, we were looking for this minor cycle bottom to come. We got this engulfing pattern right over there that suggested it was coming. Here's the short term resistance. It barely got up to it. We were looking for it to get up into that zone and it almost did you can see that and then just rolls over so this is a very weak picture for the gold market now remember that spot that i showed you where silver bottomed uh, on the weekly in uh in gold well that's right over here and you can see that bottom the rally 
the sharp rally and then breaking this low right over here breaking the VTL right over here so actually uh, this uh, uh, I'll just grab this price level right over here that is a cycle of violation at that point and uh, when you get that kind of a cycle violation it's a strong warning that you are going to go down through the end of the next cycle so this right over here takes you down to mid-november that's not good is it when you see that that's really got to really be worried about what this all means for world economies <clears throat> here's the same pattern that we looked at in in gold but even worse is you got the bottom in here and then it rolls over and almost taking out that low this is pure sickness when you look at that. So not pure 90% gold, it's uh, silver, it's pure sickness. Uh, take a look here at the platinum market. We'll switch this over forward slash PL and we'll just put up this side by side. Now this is, look at this huge break right over here. Here's that 23 bottom at there. What's the chances that this decline right over here, which would be the tw uh, 29th week, um, that that's the cycle bottom because you have 24 here, 23 here, 23 here, 29 here, not likely. So what it means is that this is the whole rally. This lines up with the same place silver and gold had that crummy bottom and then rolls over right over here. And then this uh, uh, intermediate uh, projection right over here is uh, to the same place mid mid November. So uh, all of this is just sick. I mean, it's really bad shape. When you look at that, uh, here is the short term patterns right in here. We thought it would roll over and come down, as you can see right there. And uh, it is uh, doing that. So this probably has another uh, few days. It's a little different pattern uh, than what we see in the uh, silver market. Uh, it's really more like, uh, I gotta just fix this so that you can see what this is going on here. There you go. So it's uh, really a little different pattern than we're seeing in silver, but looks like uh, it just is gonna continue to trace on the downside right over here. Ugly pattern, get the breakdown over here. And uh, how many times did I just say ugly or sick? Uh, all of those. So the real the real worry is copper, forward slash HG. And I gotta find a new word for this because this is, um, uh, how about horrible? So you saw the double top form. We talked about that. We said if it breaks this area here, that that cycle violation that early was likely to bring you a sharp decline in the red zone and that it measured way down over here to 257. Well, it's headed there. Uh, and uh, this next month or month and a half really looks like it's a uh, 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 going to be a, a more trouble right over here. So this bottoms uh, on 812. This next one over here bottoms way out in April next year. So that's uh, there's a potential that you're going to get some sharp decline in here. You get some kind of a rebound and then more trouble way out over here until April of next year. This is not healthy patterns when we look at this. And uh, it's uh, suggestive to us that uh, you get a rallies, you got to sell them, and it really means something about the economy. So uh, here's where we thought it would keep coming down to. I want you to note that our option bias indicator today gave an extreme oversold uh, on there. So this big decline, we're likely to get a bounce, and the bounce is right here on this cycle right there and uh, this is the shifted cycle that you can see this is the old cycle right over there so uh, that's uh, likely to um, come into play again we're going to leave it on there uh, just to see if that comes into play here at all uh, but that shifted cycle looks like it's it was right because you can see it comes right down to that low so uh, the, the, it's in the bottoming area it's extreme oversold right now it's likely to bounce but you can see what happens in here I mean when the uh, you know, when, when that breakdown came in the daily in the weekly right and then this turned into negative momentum on the slim ribbon it was just absolutely horrible the slim ribbon will not miss big moves it puts you in the in, in the sense of momentum and then stays with it while the momentum remains negative and it's just uh, 
uh, a great way to get good market feel in there. So copper uh, looking uh, just really bad, and as you could see, um, there, there there's something going on here that uh, says to us that the world economies are likely to be suffering going forward. Doesn't necessarily mean that the stock market is ready to turn over and collapse. It does mean at some point that the earnings projections are going to start to fall, whether it be by the trade war or whether it be by um, the uh, uh, the slowdown that um, we see as a potential uh, based on uh, just the expansion that we've had for nine years. So um, there's there's caution, at least in here, worth mentioning when you look at these the shape of the dollar and the shape of metals, the metals markets. Uh, first, we're going to look at the bonds before we look at the stock market. Now, the 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 10-year bond. Uh, well, let's start it with the 30-year because I want to then switch over to 10-year and 10-year uh, yields. The uh, Treasury bonds are really not getting any kind of a negative message in here. They're in this rising green zone that you could see right there. And that uh, is likely to um, give you some corrective period right over here out until August. That might signal that the stock market, which looks much better, uh, is going to continue uh, out into August before it really uh, gets the picture that there's some slowdown. It might be that the earnings period coming forward in stocks, um, that we get good earnings as expected, and we get lowered projections based on the background of what's going on. So we'll have to see if stocks can actually move up on good earnings. I have some doubts about that. So here's the bond market. Now, what I want you to note in here is that what we see is a, is a corrective process in here into August, and then another rally in the bond market into the beginning of October. I'm going to show you that on the 10-year also. The key is how we're projecting this timing right over here. In other words, this probably is just kind of a minor declining period and then a stronger period for bonds. Of course, all of that in a bear market. And this is all like a bear flag going on or a bear wedge that's being formed in here. Uh, however, we're in a period where bonds between now and October are not likely to give large amounts on the downside based on the way I see this pattern setting up. Here's your daily pattern in here, and you can see that the um, this this low right over here uh, at 144.14 in in the 30 year. If that breaks, it's likely to begin this corrective process of what we're looking uh, at right here. So um, we see this kind of rolling over right over here, another rally, and then rolling over again. So this is uh, this is the ZN pattern right over here. This one over here is the ZB pattern. They are out of sync. So this one has one extra smaller pattern in there, one extra smaller idealized cycle in it. Uh, it's just a bigger pattern. If I blow this up, you can see this one right over here, the ZN, this one right over here, the ZB. Anyway, you look at that, that you know highlights the period that we think is going to be corrective. This uh, uh, failure right in there in that engulfing pattern really looks like it could be the beginning of it. And with bonds not able to really rally today with the stock market getting hit, there's kind of a message there in the relative strength. So uh, we're looking for bonds to continue to trade narrowly, really, uh, over some extended period in here. And then uh, in, uh, some final move from August into the beginning of October uh, to look much better. But we'll take a look at the ZNs. Uh, you can see in here this rising period right there and the decline into August or beginning of September right over here and then the rally up again uh, and that's again we're looking at that 10-1 date as what is likely to be the peak in this uh, whole uh, bond market cor upside correction that it's in as we get this kind of you know wedgy type pattern that we're looking at right in here and you know, so we think there's just going to be some modest narrow ranges in here for the bond market. 
uh, for the near term. Here's your pattern in here. We brought this, that was that uh, burgundy cycle that we brought over to the 30 day. That's this one right over here. So we have this corrective week, week and a half before it then moves up again. Uh, in the 10 year. Now what I want to look at is the TNX. So uh, you can get an idea of why I think that we're going to likely have um, a period of rally that continues uh, for the bond market into the beginning of October is this. So you can see the almost perfect cyclicality. So the bottom comes right over here, right? So this cycle starts to form and you see the low there and you see the low here and you see the low here so you can see they're almost perfect uh, in length then this rallies makes a new high rejects that 311 area in yield and then comes down pretty sharply and you can see that we're in a corrective period in yields where they're falling uh, right in here this right over here or this date is the first week of October so that's why we think the yield low or the peak in bonds is in that early October period and that any pullback in the bond market is likely to be temporary uh, or between now and this period in early October so that's a look at the bond market overall we're looking for kind of narrow ranges in there uh, and ultimately bonds working higher, yields working lower into early October. The next thing we're going to look at is the stock market. Now SPX, this is you know really looking to me like a cycle low occurred. And we warned a few days ago, a few weeks ago, sorry, that two weeks ago, that the potential for a low was in place. We got we were in this period of high risk. And this period of high risk didn't bring you a whole lot on the downside. As a matter of fact, S&Ps fell from 27.90 uh, only down to a low of 26.90. So it was a it was a hundred point break. We thought it could be significantly more than that during that period. The cyclical formation that we have is positive, and that increases the likelihood that over coming months well let's say coming weeks that we're going to continue to see the stock market move to the upside somewhere in here maybe china blinks uh, uh and we get uh the markets celebrating on the upside maybe it's a good earnings period that actually brings that and you can see in here that that 20 week low that you have there we marked as the potential cycle low in place and then you got this big upward move that you can see there so even if we come down a little bit in here it's not going to matter it's likely we're going to get another move up over here so we have the uh hall moving average right over here maintaining positive you can see it stayed green that whole time it never even rolled over so the intermediate uh, terminal momentum has stayed positive through this corrective period, not like in here where it actually got negative and you got a lot of selling that came in. So that's a look at the SPX on the weekly, which looks like it bottomed. And you can see our projection in here has it going up for some number of weeks on the upside. Here is this short term period in here. Now with this being the cycle that uh, is the NASDAQ, the Russell, right in here, us getting up to this cycle peak resistance, these Fib resistances, and leaving that abandoned baby right there, that says to me that, well, there's a pretty good chance that the next week or week and a half gets you into the minor support zone in here. Uh, Again, you get any good news, this is going to pop through here and the pattern is going to look more like that. Uh, if China responds and says they're going to have $200 billion in tariffs on their own, then you're going to wake up and find the S&P's down 30 again or more, and then you're going to get into this support zone. In the meantime, the when, when you look, I actually want to look at the side by side on here so you can get a good understanding of this. So this is that new rising phase. It's a strong likelihood of that. If, if we're right and this corrective period that we're looking at right over here of the next week or so exists 
in this rising phase, it's not going to give you much. It's going to let you decline right in here into that minor support zone. And then when you get past this period in here of that nesting area, it moves up again, as you can see us having it drawn, and that's a favorable period. So uh, all everything we're looking at here, some of the evidence is suggestive of the fact that we get more pullback right now, but it only hits the supports and then moves up again. That's what it looks like to us. I hope that was clear. I tried to make that really clear. Here is, again, this 19-week low and then turning up. This is pretty clear that it was a bottom and hardly fell off at all uh, from, you know, 73.10 down to uh, about uh, 70 right there. So that was 300 points in that downward move. It did not get into that support zone, but it did get close. So this period of high risk that we had, you know, it was only a modest pullback. It came, but when you get pullbacks like this and then velocity on the upside like this, it shows you that we've entered this new rally phase. Again, when you look here, you could see this projects out for maybe five to seven trading days into this minor support zone and then up again. The same thing for the Russell. When we look at this, let's just open it up like this and you could see that this yellow zone looks like it ended. This is probably a new green zone. We're gonna wait to put that in till we get past this corrective period about four to six days. Uh, right there. You can see that the we're on the low of the day right now uh, for the Russell uh, down about 11 points. It was down deeper overnight, but this is the low of the actual trading session. Uh, so we're looking for it to pull back into this minor support zone somewhere below 1677 down to about maybe 1667 uh, over this next four to six days. Uh, if it gets below 1660, there'll be some signal of some danger in there. Uh, we'll have to see. So we'll be putting in a green zone in here pretty soon, and it's very likely we are in there already. Uh, we just uh, are going to leave it until this uh, short-term pattern completes over there. Uh, in the Russell, which is the only one we have the colored phasing in. So uh, that is a look at the stock indexes. And overall, um, as we kept raising our downward projections in this period of risk, um, the, the market has been quite solid uh, and didn't give us much ground. And now we believe we're in a, just a small little correction at the beginning of the next rising phase. That would make me somewhat bullish. Now, I'm somewhat bullish only for some weeks going out after this pullback that we're in right now. Uh, and then we'll be looking for the potential for a very important top to be occurring and for investors to be uh, thinking about um, uh, it's that it's time to start considering the slowdown possibilities out there. Well, it's really an interesting piece of information, or a couple of them, is that there were a couple of reports out today that said that because of the trade war, sovereign wealth funds all across the world were uh, going to be reducing their holdings of equities. Now, that's a pretty pretty big statement when you hear that because you know they've been manipulating these prices up very significantly for uh, quite a number of years especially the Bank of Japan uh, in that uh, and uh, that the uh, trade war um, is uh, uh, certainly uh, responsible for that there was uh, one other piece of news right in here I just want to pull up my note on that uh, that said that uh, foreign investment in the U.S. had dropped uh, very sharply uh, in 2017. So that's a really late, uh, we're really late to get that information, uh, but I don't believe that foreign investment in the U.S. Uh, has uh, picked up at all based on what we're seeing here. So there, there are reasons to believe that the nine-year bull run uh, is going to be coming to a close sometime after in, in this rally, next rally phase that I think we're just in. Uh, and that would mean longer-term holders have to be really considering what that might mean. So I would, uh, I'm going to be doing big-picture analysis on that and bringing some of that information in uh, sometime soon.
So that is uh, a look at the stock indexes. The last thing we're going to look at is the grains and softs forward slash um, uh, ZC is the first one we're going to look at in the corn market. Um, well, the soybean market uh, got cremated. Uh, it's at a 10 year low right now. It's amazing the way that failed. Uh, and uh, gave up an enormous amount. That is driving down the other grains. Also, the corn hit our cell zone uh, and just uh, collapsed out of that. You can see that right here on the intermediate pattern. Uh, if it gets under this uh, area right over here, which is th just under 340, that's going to set up a very long negative decline. You got to see if it's going to get its footing in here and get saved, but that's a very big decline. This has on the daily about another week or so to go on the downside. And you can see our note right over here on 711. Our option bias indicator is extreme oversold. So there's a potential for a bounce coming in about a week. You could see the cyclicality in here is nearly perfect as here are your um, idealized cycles and here is how they actually did trade right in here and then the breakdown which gave you this big decline and then another breakdown over here which gave you the big decline so really uh, clear messages coming here from these charts and a big failure that you could see right there the wheat market uh, again in total collapse today on this news this is a low that came that we said looked really early to us and that it was likely that this rally would fail and that that's caused by the short squeeze last week and you can see that it is exactly doing that here is last week's short squeeze also that you could see right there you could see wheat um, in this unusual another one of these unusual patterns where you made the low here you went lower and then you went higher so that is a megaphone forming in here that means that in about a week you'll probably get another rally up to that area there but right now for the next week it's got a lot of risk so uh, the soybean market you'll see that in here this massive failure as uh, it came up right over here didn't quite hit that fib extension right then he was in this green zone had the cycle violation and total collapse these two blue spikes tell you where we think the low is going to be that was been there for a while and we're declining right into that period with not a sign yet of any kind of a bottom and uh, we got very oversold right over here on 7.6. This is that short squeeze day when the markets all rallied. And now you see uh, it rolls over and takes out the low. The low due in the next two, three days right in here. So we think that, you know, given any kind of a breath of good news uh, on tariffs, you're going to get the, um, these grains uh, bouncing on the upside. Forward slash KC is the coffee market. That's the next one we'll look at. This you can see a, had that hammer bottom right there. We thought that established an important low at about 107. We still think it's going to go back down there. This has got all the way through the mid-September before that bottom is really due. Take a look here at this, and this is that short squeeze day again, and now it's rolling over. So we would expect in the next week it's going to come down a little bit further and then get a rally right in here that is likely then to fail after that. So that would be the shape of what we uh, expect to be coming in the next week. Again, th into September is when that low is likely to occur. Uh, cocoa is the best of all of these patterns. Now, I don't know what there is about cocoa that has it this bullish, but you can see in here that it built the base, it had the strong move, it has a positively configured right-hand translation, which says that once this bottom is in place, it then has a big upside move. Yeah, likelihood is about 70% that it's going to test that level right up over there. So once we see the bottom form in here, we believe it will be bullish. It's giving you that sign right over here because you can see a positive configuration. It hits the resistance zone, which is what we would expect. And this is a, uh, a pattern that it looks like it's shaping up. Notice a shift right in here. So this might go a little bit longer. And then we think it moves sharply higher. Somewhere here in the next week and a half to two weeks, we think we get the bottom. And then based on what we see in here, uh, that would be that we, we might have the bottom in place already in the weekly. So cocoa, the best looking pattern of everything that we see there. 
in the grains and softs. <clears throat> and here you have the cotton market. This is our sell zone, perfect cyclicality that you see in here. Bottom comes right here. You get the big upside move four weeks ago uh, and starting to struggle already. So uh, cotton market here, based on this pattern, another week or so to fall, and then you get a rally. On the side-by-side -side that you can see, it says to us that this decline goes for another month, therefore this rally fails. That's why it's a sell zone and then comes down right over here. We believe that in the next few days, if you get up into that area, that it's a high probability spot to be shorting it. That is it through six segments of the markets. Uh, the uh, very significant, I'm just gonna sum it up, that we're likely getting into a period of a stronger dollar and that the metals look this horrible. And all of that is suggestive of the fact that there's some problems in the economies of the world out there. We don't know when the stock market is going to really get the sense of the reality of that. Uh, and based on the stock market patterns, it doesn't look like it's right now. It looks like it's some weeks down the road before that happens because we're very early in a rising phase. Were the stock market to give it up, in other words, to break the lows that we made a couple of weeks ago, that would be a very horrible message if that happened. I don't expect that now. I expect it to get its footing and then move up one more time for some number of weeks, but we've got to keep our eye out for that possibility as the stock market again turns weak in here. Um, so that's, that's it. Uh, overall, uh, there, there's really a signal of worldwide slowdown based on everything I'm seeing in here and, uh, and we're going to keep our focus on that as the highest probability and maybe that, that, will, uh, that which will affect the markets in some significant way. That's it for Future Speak. Any questions, comments, please send me the email. I'll see you in the next segment.